Hey, how's it going everybody? It's your favorite cow. Unless you already have another one. <laughs> but anyways, if you guys are at all familiar with my channel, then you'll know that I made a 29 day series of beats inspired by legendary Japanese hip hop producer, Nujabes. In this video, I'm gonna go over why I made the series what I learned and some of the pros and cons from my experience and in future videos I'm gonna go over some of my personal favorites some of your personal favorites that you've messaged me about on my Instagram posts and other social media platforms and I'll go over some of the techniques some of the choices I've made and what I did to kind of get that signature new job is vibe so now let's get on to the why a lot of you guys have asked me in the comments or through DMs, why did I pick this series? Well, to be honest, once this pandemic started, I really needed a project to keep myself motivated and be consistent in making beats. I decided to look back at some of my earliest influences in beat making for inspiration. I decided to pick Nujabas because Nujabas was one of my earliest influences when I started making beats. And even though my production has developed to something I could call my own, I tend to look back at his um, tapes and his soundtracks, especially in the Samurai Shampoo soundtrack, and take pages out of his book every now and again. What better producer to make a beat inspired series out of? Should be easy, right? Wrong! Kinda. We'll get into that. Okay, so let's go on to... What did I learn? At the start of this, I was honestly pretty inconsistent when I made beats. I kind of made beats whenever I honestly felt like it. So this project kind of um, made me learn how to stay consistent and schedule oriented. I had to make beats and edit videos two times a week. So basically I was constantly under pressure to keep making content and to vote motivate me to stay consistent. It helped me learn how to adhere to a schedule, which I feel like as a producer, as a self-employed producer, is something that's really invaluable. So that's a major lesson I took I took away from this. Something else I also learned was that through another producer style, I began to realize what my own style is and what I like and what I don't like in beats, whether I'm listening to them and and or making them. Um, because to be honest, I'm not a fan of all of New Jabez's techniques and everything that he does. So listening to them and replicating them, really, I came to term with terms with my own style. On a personal level, I began to come to terms with my own laziness and lack of motivation. It kind of kicked me in the ass to keep making content because honestly, in this day and age, you have to do that. You have to be consistent and you have to do all in your power to get yourself ahead and get yourself noticed. For me, the music is first, you know. I'm wearing this thing because that's my brand. I like it, but I felt that it was so jarring for me. Like this schedule was so like foreign to me and such a shock because I wasn't taking it at all seriously as much as I should have. So once I got into the schedule of that I needed to do this because people were depending on me to do it, I wasn't used to it and it became very stressful. So now that I know that, now that I know what I need to do, now that I know what it takes, I'm way more inclined to actually put myself out there and work for it because no one's gonna really do it for you. So that was a big takeaway from this series. So let's go on to the pros and the cons. Pros and the cons. Oh, that was, that was kind of fucking lame. <laughs> let's start off with the pros. So like I mentioned before, along with me learning how to adhere to schedules, coming to terms with my own with my own laziness and basically everything I just mentioned. There were some like real benefits in terms of production that I took away from this. The the other stuff that I learned was a little bit more general. What I'm about to mention now is hundred percent the positives of what came out of this type of experience. Well for starters, I definitely improved my workflow. And what I mean by that is that I stopped overthinking. So job as a style is Simple, not simplistic. As in his beats, everything in his beats serves a purpose. He doesn't overthink, he has the vibe. Once he reaches that vibe, that's it. Because I needed to do that, and because I was forced to do things differently that I honestly would 
would do normally. It forced me to understand that adding stuff, being additive, doesn't always make a beat better unless it's going to enhance the track as a whole. It taught me to avoid fluff basically. I learned that everything in the beat needs to serve a purpose and I'm going to add it and needs to serve that that purpose. Making these type of beats that are simple and that everything serves its purpose is a great exercise in learning not to add fluff and you might jeopardize the whole track by trying to add more. Try being subtractive instead of adding. I stopped overthinking and it honestly made me be faster, like, which is a, another huge benefit. Because I stopped overthinking, I got way faster at making beats. I learned what I wanted out of the beat before I even started making it. Because I knew how this beat was going to sound, I knew what needed to be added, and then once I reached it, I, I stopped. I was starting to crank out beats in a lot faster ways. That way, if I were to send stuff to people, I could send more. Also, because I was adhering to a schedule, that made me get faster because I was pressured to do it. I was pressured to not overthink because I can't overthink. I can't, I don't have time to do it. Like, it's good. Let's, let's move on. And that really helped me a cow shit ton. Cow shit ton. Basically, you, you know when the track is done and you have more content to put out and you're able to have people hear that content because you have more content. You have more beats. Artists nowadays want more. They want constantly to hear new type of styles. And if you're just sitting on one or two beats, and you're putting all your eggs in one basket, that's really doing yourself a disservice. So being faster helps you develop more content and knowing what you want helps those beats also be better. So your quantity and your quality get higher. And I think that definitely helped me because that was definitely something that I was struggling with as a producer. And the last thing, the last major thing was my mixing. Once again, I was mixing, mastering, arranging all these tracks, a video version and a soon to be coming album version. Um, so I needed to mix these tracks and I needed to mix them fast because I needed to make not only two beats, but two videos. So that forced me to enhance my mixing knowledge, which as a producer, as a self-employed producer, you can't always have an engineer. That's just not feasible. That's not realistic. I began to realize what I personally needed and what I personally want. His style is a little bit more lo-fi. So I kind of wanted to add a more modern twist in my own style, putting those tools together two different mixing styles, really put into perspective what I want, but also just helped my mixing and my engineering in general. Um, and that's definitely one of the huge pros of doing something this consistently, practice makes perfect. Practicing your mixing like this, 29 days, two times a week, a beat that needs to be out there to the world is such a, such a great crash course on mixing. Those are basically the pros. So let's get down to the cons. <laughs> so like I mentioned before, I was adhering to a pretty tough schedule, especially the fact that I had never done video editing before. I had to learn Adobe Premiere. I had to learn Photoshop. All I knew was Ableton back um, when I started. So all this is really still very new to me. I still don't know jack shit about what I'm honestly doing to be honest. I'm just pressing record and seeing what the fuck happens. So because of that, all of this was so new and so fast and I was honestly pushing myself to do two videos a week. I honestly got burnt out towards the end. Should I have waited and like learned a little more before I started? Maybe, but honestly this year was just like, I had so much fucking free time. I was like, why not? Why am I gonna wait? I honestly learned what I needed and I was like, fuck it, let's just go, let's do it. Enough wasting time, I'll learn as I go. I need this to work off now. But as a result, I got burnt out pretty quick. I got really stressed and my whole week revolved around making these um, making these videos. That's just an, honestly a very honest insight and like look into what it took for me, which I feel like a lot of producers don't really get into too much, but to each his own. But I wanna be honest with you guys, I got, I got fucking exhausted and I didn't want the beats to suffer. Towards the end, I made a post saying, I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Well, not, not break, I'm not going to make two videos a week. So that's where you see the one video a week schedule release for the last four videos. Cause I wanted these beats to be dope. I wanted the last four beats to like, I wanted to end on a strong note, especially the last one. I'm really proud of that one. Big epic conclusion, kind of sounds like Horizon by New Jabez. It's like a long track. And I, I didn't want to just come out with a regular schmegler beat just because I'm I'm stressing about editing, you know? The music comes first for me. But because I'm like, I was such a slow poke, and still a fucking slow poke at this, I felt like the beats towards the end were a little bit lackluster. 
still happy with them, but I felt that they weren't as strong as the ones I, I released towards the end and towards the middle. It was 29 days. It was a long fucking time to be this dedicated to one thing. And ironically, that actually led to a lack of motivation. Who would have thought? It started to kind of feel like a job. This was started off really fun for me, but because it was so annoying to have to deal with the editing, to have to deal with just the schedule, the pressure, it became to feel like a job. And I wasn't really motivated to make um, these type of beats anymore. I still like them, but I kind of wanted to go back to my own stuff. And it kind of rejuvenated my desire to make my own style, which is it's still influenced, but still significantly differ from the new Java style. I got a little bored and I wasn't as motivated to do it anymore, to do the series I'm in, because I felt like I was pressured to it. And honestly, for me, as soon as something starts to feel like a job, I start to become less and less interested in doing it. Another huge con for me was the loss of time. I dedicated so long to this project that I kind of missed a lot of opportunities and I kind of ignored other opportunities that I had and people hit me up. And to anybody that I haven't hit up back with collabs and everything, I apologize to you from the bottom of my heart. This project took a lot of time away from me. Do I regret it? Like, do, I mean, do I regret making it? No, because it's still fun. And I'm, I felt like I was working on myself. It made me realize that I need to evolve myself, kick my ass into shape before I involve myself with other people. So you could look at that as a pro or a con, but for me, I'm putting this in the con category because of the fact that I still missed out on some opportunities. And honestly, some of those opportunities were money i could have sold some beats but instead i'm making the series at the end of the day i still kind of took a financial hit by dedicating myself this long to something like this so would i recommend producers to do a type of series like this most definitely but definitely for way less time than i did it <laughs> because honestly most of the cons that i mentioned were based off the amount of time i dedicated to it but other than that it was a great experience it helped me avoid being in a vacuum especially during such a lonely time it kept me consistent i mentioned everything already it's such a great practice such a great exercise i definitely highly recommend doing something like this maybe for five to ten days ten day series based on whatever producer i might do something similar in the future who knows also which reminds me i want to ask you guys what producer do you think I should try tackling next. Also tell me in the comments what was your favorite beat in the entire series. Links in the description if you want to check out the whole series or pop up right around now. Okay. Also tell me if you kind of like these type of videos of me kind of just talking about production and kind of the in-depth like kind of the psychological side of um, what goes into beat making. So let me know what you guys think and if you guys go through any of these type of struggles in your own beat making. Otherwise got the channel I have a link to the patreon the twitter you guys can check me out on instagram at underscore for the republic underscore like the video share the video helps a poop ton a moo ton and i'll see you guys next time Ooh, moo 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 out oh.